QuickBooks Online, delayed credit form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're gonna be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We'll be looking for the United States version is what we will be using and verify that we're not a robot. Zooming in by holding down control up on the scroll bar, currently at 125% on the zoom in. Remembering that in the cog dropdown, we can toggle between the business and accounting view. Currently, we are in the business view. We might toggle to the, I'm sorry, currently we are in the accountant view. We might toggle to the business view possibly at the end so we can see the locations of items under both views. I'm gonna to go to the tab up top, right click on it and duplicate the tab as we do every time in order to put our major financial statement reports in them. Right clicking on the tab again, duplicating again, going back to the tab to the left as the tab to the right is thinking and going down to the reports on the left and this time opening the balance sheet. Then I'm gonna to tab to the right as that is thinking Go back to the reports on the left, open up the PL profit and loss or income statement report. Close up the hamburger, scroll to the top, do the range change on the date range 010122 tab to 123122 January through December 2022. Run it to refresh it. Tab to the left, close in the hamburger, scrolling to the top, same ranging on the changing. The ranges, they are a changing. 010122 to 123122 tab run it to refresh it and then back to the tab to the left that's the setup process we do every time hitting the drop down in the new button we've been looking at the customer area customer cycle representing the fact that at the end of the cycle we expect basically money to be going into our account to our checking account for goods and services provided to a customer the easiest way to do that would be if we had the gig work and we're just getting paid by a platform like youtube we wait till it clears the bank we record the deposit at that point in time, possibly with the help of the bank feeds. Or we have a cash-based system where we had a cash register where we would enter the sales receipt first and then the deposit. Or we're in a system where we have to invoice the client because we have to do the work first, then invoice the client, increase in accounts receivable, then receive a payment, and then we make the deposit into the system. Now we've been focusing in on these items down below which are kind of more unusual items, the credit memo in essence reversing the sale. And then we talked about a refund receipt and now we're going into the delayed credit. Now the credit memo traditionally would be in a situation, let's go to the float chart over here. Let's Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And we're gonna to try to sort out when you might use some of these different forms. So for example, if you're looking at the full accrual process, you've got the invoice, then we receive the payment, then we record the deposit. Let's say that we make an invoice and before we get paid, the customer says, hey, there's a problem. I, I want to reverse this or I'm gonna give you bad tweets or something like that. And we're like, okay, we'll reverse it. Well then right here, you can make the credit memo, which would reverse the transaction, lowering the accounts receivable. However, if you put the invoice in, you got the receive payment and you recorded the deposit already, or you made a sale at a cash register, recorded the deposit, and then the customer comes back and says, hey, reverse this, or I'm gonna tweet at you something bad or something, and you're like, okay. Then you gotta possibly issue them the money back at that point in time, which means that you could use like a check form, but that's when we talked about last time that you can issue them the uh, refund receipt. So a refund receipt is kind of like a check form and then it's gonna decrease the checking account and kind of like a credit memo and that it should reverse the transaction entirely, but instead of reducing the accounts receivable, it results in a payment, 
a reduction uh, basically to the checking account. Okay, so what about a situation where they've already paid us and we're like, okay, I don't, I'm not going to decrease, I'm not going to actually issue a check, but we'll give you a credit basically for a future purchase. So in that case, we have a couple kind of options. If they've already paid us, we could issue them a credit memo at that point still because uh, the credit memo will wind up usually reducing the accounts receivable because it's usually right here and we've reduced, but if they've already paid us, they don't owe us any money. So the credit memo will, will result in a negative accounts receivable, which isn't quite proper because it, like it should be like a positive liability if we're gonna record it at that point in time. But that works quite well from an accounting standpoint because that allows us to track it in the accounts receivable. And next time, if we make another invoice for them, we can match it to that credit balance that is in place. So the other way you could think about recording it is instead of, instead of doing that, you might say, I'm going to issue them a delayed credit. And the delayed credit will not actually record the transaction at the point you enter it but it will record the transaction at the future point when you create the next invoice. So then the question would be, should I be recording the transaction at the point in time that I, that I issue like the credit memo or should I record the transaction if they actually follow through and make a, a future purchase with an invoice in the future? So that would be kind of an accounting transaction that you would want to think about. So we'll try to take a look at those two options. The other way that you might look at a at a delayed credit would be a situation, for example, usually you, you create an invoice and then uh, you receive the payment. But you might have a situation where you've received the payment first, possibly like getting a down payment on a sale that you're going to make. So now you've got the money first. In accounting terminology, we call that basically an unearned revenue situation usually. But and we'll talk more about unearned revenue in the future. But usually, if you get paid first, uh, you, you want to record it as a liability. But again, we have this same kind of problem that if I use a liability account, that's not the account that we usually tie to the customers because in the future, I want to tie it to an invoice. So we're going backwards now. I have the payment and then I want to tie it to an invoice. So oftentimes, people will use the receive payment here resulting in this credit kind of hanging there that we can then tie to a future invoice. So that's another area where you can use a receive payment or you could try to use uh, the, the delayed credit. If you use a delayed credit, again, it's, it's not actually going to record the transaction at that point in time at all until it's going to be applied to the future invoice. So which isn't exactly proper, you, you know, usually you would want to record the receive payment. But I've seen people use the delayed credit in that area. And I just want to point that out. I don't think it's the best way to go. I would think you would want to use the receive payment to, to make that credit. And then you can tie that out to the future invoice. And you can also make periodic adjustments at the end of the period to break it out between accounts receivable and the unearned revenue. So hopefully that's another way that you can look at it. And then you also might just have a situation where you're dealing with a customer and you're saying, I, I will you know, grant you a future credit if you make a purchase kind of thing. And so therefore, if they decide to make a purchase, that's when you apply the future credit. And I think that's when it's most likely properly going to be used. Because again, the delayed credit is not recording the transaction at the point you enter it into the system. So if it's if it's not something that you that you're committed, if it's something you're committed to, you should think that you should record the financial transaction at that time with the receive payment possibly or the credit memo but if it's something that's not likely to happen in the future and you're not supposed to record it at this time but if it does happen you want to take it into account that's when you've got this delayed credit will which will kick in at the end so let's take a look at a couple examples first let's do a let's just do i'll do this fairly quickly because we've seen these before i'm going to make an invoice and then receive the payment and then uh and then we'll go we'll we'll, we'll do the credit memo and then we'll compare that to the delayed credit. So I'm going to do the same thing we've seen before and I'll make my invoice. I'm going to call this inventory, inventory one on the item. And actually, hold on. I'm going to make a new item inventory one. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in the description. I'm going to say the quantity on hand is 10. The date at the beginning of the period reorder point is zero. 
the sales price 1000 it's going to be taxable the purchase description same 750 for the cost cost of goods sold same thing we've seen in prior examples we're setting up the inventory item they cost 750 we sell them for 1000 so if i record this it's going to increase the accounts receivable 1080 the other side's going to go to sales by a thousand the difference of 80 is going to go to the sales tax payable inventory is going to go down by by the 750 driven by the item and the cost of goods sold is going to go up by the 750. let's save it and close it and if i just follow the transaction here and i go to my sales side here for my revenue cycle and then i look at my customers let's just go directly to the customers aaa i'm going to go into aaa there's my invoice now let's say that they pay us on it so i'm going to say receive payment we've got the payment they paid us same day that's fine whatever the payment i'll say cash i'll put it into undeposited funds this then decrease in the accounts receivable going into undeposited funds now if they didn't pay us yet and they reversed the transaction, that's where the credit memo would go. But now we're saying they already paid us. So I'm going to say save and close. And then I'm going to say, let's finish it off with a deposit. I'm going to hit the plus button up top, deposit it. And then we're going to say that's the one. And then I will deposit it, increase in the checking account and the other side going to decreasing undeposited funds. The deposit's been made. So now if I go to the to the balance sheet and I refresh it, at the end of the day, the checking account has in essence going up because the accounts receivable went up and down. On the income statement, we know that if I run it again, there was an increase to the revenue account. If I go back to the balance sheet, there should have been an increase to the uh, tax account for the sales tax inventory would have gone down the sub ledger for inventory tracking by item also goes down and the cost of goods sold the expense account related to the sale of inventory goes up okay so then now i'm in the situation where they come back and they say hey i i have a problem i want you to reverse this transaction well you've already paid us so what can we do at this point we could issue a check or an expense form, but we'd rather do something in the customer field. So if we're gonna actually issue them a, a refund at that point, we might use the refund receipt, which we talked about before. But we also might say, hey, look, if you, if we'll just issue a credit, which means now I'm gonna have a credit outstanding that I can tie out to a future invoice in the future. So I could do that with a credit memo, even though it's, a credit memo usually decrease in the accounts receivable, but this time it's going to leave us with a credit still hanging there. Or I can use a delayed credit, which means it's not going to record the transaction until we actually, uh, until we actually apply the credit. Now, I think most of the time, the credit memo would be the way to go because you would expect that they would take advantage of, of the credit memo and you should probably record it at that time. But if you don't think they're going to do it, or maybe they might not, or the odds are that they won't or something, then maybe the delayed credit would be more appropriate because it won't be recorded unless they actually uh, follow through with another transaction. So let's see the credit memo first. Let's do that option first and see what it looks like. So I'll make a credit memo for AAA. And then I'm going to say it's for the same inventory one. We're just going to reverse it exactly. And then same thing here. So it looks perfect. We're going to reverse it exactly. We could have the same issue that we talked about with the credit memo with the with the sales returns and allowances instead of hitting the sales. I won't go into that in detail here. Look at the other credit memo one for that. If you don't want to reverse sales exactly, I'll just say save and close this one. And so that reverses the transaction. So that should reverse everything exactly on all of our accounts uh, uh, over here, but it doesn't uh, make a payment from the checking account here, it basically made a negative accounts receivable. So in the accounts receivable now, if I scroll down, we've got the invoice and then we've got the payment and then a credit memo. So now we've got this credit kind of hanging out here. And notice that this is, this is kind of just a, 
the term credit can be kind of confusing because from an accounting standpoint, it just means two sides of the ledgers. The credit is the credit side of the ledger. But then from the accounts receivables standpoint from this AR account, which represents the customer owing us money, it's a debit balance account, which means that you know a debit balance is good for us, the business owner, because it's an asset, we expect to be paid, but it's bad for the customer because it means that they owe us money. So then when we say we're crediting your account as a customer, we're just lowering, that we're just putting an amount on the credit side of the ledger. But from the customer's perspective, that's a good thing because that's lowering the amount they owe us usually, or possibly in this case, it's representing the fact that they have a credit that they can apply to future purchases. So that's why credits tend to be good. Like we see them as good from a customer perspective, but from a bookkeeping perspective, it's just the left side of the accounts receivable ledger still. So they're still the same thing. In any case, so let's go back. Let's go back to the first tab here. And so now we can see this credit memo is kind of, of hanging out here and it's unapplied. That's the point. The transaction has already been recorded and now you've got this unapplied credit so that if I make a future purchase, let's say I make a future purchase with a, another invoice, let's say for AAA, and let's say they, they then purchase, let's say something else, let's say a pump or whatever. And we, let's say they get like five of those. And then, so now we've got, we've got the payment. Now I want to apply out the credit to it. So what I'm actually going to do is record it, which would increase the accounts receivable and then apply out the credit if the system doesn't do it automatically. So I'm going to save it and close it. And then uh, there it is. So now we've got this invoice and it says it's paid already because the system already found the, the credit that was outstanding and applied it over, which is beautiful, right? That's what we, what we want to happen. Now, if I go back into this invoice, you can see that it's marked off as paid because it's linked to the credit memo. And then, and then, uh, so, so you've got the invoice has already been basically processed in, in that case, right? So it's been paid off. So it's kind of a little wonky because you have to enter the invoice and then, and then go back into it to show if any net amount is still outstanding but that's how the credit works. Now notice that if I go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate this tab. And then I go into uh, the reports and we look at the close in the hamburger who owes you money. And I'm gonna go into the customer balance uh, detail report. And so notice that that in, in AAA, I've got this negative balance. That's not exactly right because it should be a liability because we owe them money. It's not a negative receivable. So it's kind of an issue that way. So from a, from well, you can fix that by just making adjusting entries at the end of the period and then record that as basically, you know, unearned revenue, a liability account. So this is kind of an unearned revenue kind of issue. But from a bookkeeping standpoint, it's quite nice to record it under the umbrella of accounts receivable because we want to apply it to a future invoice. We have the same issue with other uh, other kind of uh, issues with unearned revenue. Well, now, now let's do it again, but this time I'm gonna use, instead of a credit memo, a delayed uh, credit. So let's do it again. I'm gonna hit the plus button and say it's an invoice. This time I'm gonna do it for BBB and I'm gonna say save it and we'll just do the same thing. And I'm gonna say this is for inventory one, which has already been set up. And so there it is, same transaction, except for BBB. I'm gonna save it and close it. And then if I go into my customers over here, I'm gonna look at BBB, which now has this, this uh, invoice. Then they pay us. So I'm gonna say receive payment. Let's say they already paid us and it's gonna be cash or whatever. And I'll just put it directly into the checking account, not deal with undeposited funds. So now they pay us with it. So I'm gonna say, save it and close it. Boom, transaction recorded, they paid us. Now they come back in and say, hey, I, this, I wanna reverse the transaction. Again, we can issue them, we can issue them a check or an expense form, but we would probably, if we're gonna pay them, give them the refund receipt, which would be a credit memo, but reversing cash basically, or, we can issue the credit memo, which would record the credit at this point in time, or 
if we think that they're they might not go through with the transaction it's likely that they're not going to actually make a future purchase maybe it would be appropriate to enter the delayed credit which isn't actually going to record a transaction unless they unless they actually follow through and make the transaction in the future again i think most of the time if you're if they're likely to do the transaction you should record it at this point with a credit memo if they're not likely then maybe the delayed credit would be the more appropriate thing because it doesn't record a transaction if you don't think they're going to fulfill it. So then if they did the delayed credit, I'm going to say BBB. We're saying, we'll just, if you buy something else, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. But they, they're like, whatever, I'm not going to do business with you. And we're like, okay, but we'll put the delayed credit in there. Hold on a sec. Do you want to leave without saving? Yes. So the customer is BBB. Okay, so there it is. We're going to do the same thing. This is going to be inventory one. And so so there's uh, the transaction. Notice it's it's not recording the tax uh, at this point in time because it will be applied out when we do the when we do the actual transaction, when they do the actual credit. So this isn't actually going to record anything is the point. So if I if I say save and close, at least to the financial statements, now you've got you've got uh, this credit here, but if I look at the reports on the financial statements and I, and I run this report and I go into the accounts receivable and I scroll all the way down, uh, we, we see the BBB here on the invoice, but we don't see the, the delayed credit, right? We've got it here but we're not showing that that other delayed credit. So in other words, if I go back on over here and I go to this report and I run this report, BBB isn't on this report because there's no outstanding invoices. It's not showing the negative, the negative amount in here. It's not in here at all because it hasn't been recorded. So it's still gonna be able to apply. So the base, if I go back to the first tab, it looks the same over here. It's it's open because if we make an invoice, we can apply it out to the invoice, but it's not actually being recorded on the financial statements until they take advantage of it, until they actually do that. So again, that would only be appropriate possibly, I would think, if they're not likely to do it. But then if they come in and they do, so we could make the invoice directly or you could come up top here and we could make an invoice. And then I'm gonna say this is for BBB, BBB. And there it is, tab. And then it's trying to pull in. So I'm gonna pull that one in. So there's the credit. And let's say we're gonna make a sale of something like like pumps. We'll sell like a thousand of them. So there we sell 15,000 and then it's netting out the 1,000 up top. So I'm gonna, you could then pull this one up to the top if you want and say there's the 1,000 minus, I mean the 15,000 that we're selling minus the 1,000, both have the tax applied to it. So there's the 14,000 and then the tax applied uh, down below. So what what is this going to do? Well, it's an invoice, it's gonna increase the accounts receivable, but by the net amount now of the 15,120, uh, the other side's gonna go to the sales, but only for the 14,000 after taking down the 1000 here, the difference is still going to go to the payable account. And then the inventory is going to be uh, going down by these pumps if these are uh, inventory items. But also, we're going to have the inventory units now of of this inventory item being uh, impacted at that point in time because we, we delayed the transaction for the inventory items here. So when we did the reversal, so that's a little bit kind of wonky on that and then the cost of goods sold similar kind of scenario so let's save it and close it and just check it out and so now if i go to the balance sheet and run it hold down control scroll up if i go into the accounts receivable we can see the accounts receivable was impacted down here for the for the net amount which makes sense the sales side you know would be impacted by the net amount and then the sales tax would all work well, the kind of weird thing might be in the inventory item here. If I go into inventory, then we've got the 
Notice you've got your inventory items, which you would think if it was an invoice, it would be going down right there. But then you also have got your inventory item here that is going up because it's kind of reversing with the credit memo. So if you're dealing with inventory, you know, you got to be a little bit a little bit careful on when you're going to be, you know, reversing or adjusting the inventory on that one. That's when it gets a little bit strange. If I go back on over and then go to this tab, this is the customer detail. Let's right click on it and duplicate it again and look at the inventory summary report. And so I'm going to go to the reports on the left hand side and then go to the inventory inventory valuation summary. And so now we've got our our inventory notices back up at basically 10 at this point in time because it, it reversed assuming we got the inventory you know back at that point so that's where it's a little bit a little bit strange okay so let's go back and look at the other kind of option that we might use i'm going to go to the first tab close this back out and open the hamburger that we're going to receive a down payment so we're going to get paid before we issue the invoice which would normally be unearned revenue but we're going to record it with a receive uh, payment form uh, which will basically make a negative credit so i'm not going to make this for customer ccc this time and ccc payment doesn't have an open invoice so we can't decrease the accounts receivable uh instead we're going to put the accounts receivable in the hole a negative accounts receivable which isn't exactly proper but it works quite well because we can then apply it to a future invoice that we plan to be making so we'll talk more about this later but when we get into this unearned revenue issue but this is one way that you can do it which works well because everything's in the the accounts receivable so we're going to say it's going to deposit i'm just going to put it directly into the checking account here and i'm going to say that the amount is we'll just say a thousand dollars okay so let's say save and close this and then uh save the credit so now we've got in CCC, I'm looking at CCC's customer account. We've got this payment credit that we can apply out into uh, the future. So if I go to the balance sheet then, and I go back to the balance sheet and look at my accounts receivable, let's refresh this running it and the AR scrolling down. We've got this receivable, it decreases, it decreases the receivable for CCC. Scrolling back up. Uh, the other side went into the checking account. And if I look in the accounts receivable sub ledger and run this, it looks not quite right because we get this negative receivable. That's kind of an issue because it should be a positive liability like unearned revenue. But the negative receivable works well because we're able to track everything in the receivable. So oftentimes that's done in practice and we can make adjusting entries at the end of the period to make the liability if there's any of these negative receivables and then reverse it. We'll talk more about that later, but that's one way to record it. And then we can go to the first tab and if they make a future purchase or something uh, like that, then we can, we, can apply, we can apply out this payment to it. So then if they had uh, an invoice that we're going to create in the future. I can invoice in the future and then say that we're going to say that this is going to be for CCC. And let's say that they're going to then make a purchase of something that's that we're going to apply that out to concrete, whatever. It's going to be 1000 of them at $5 or something. So 5000 and then I'm going to apply out that overpayment to it. So I'm going to record the invoice and then apply the two things and then apply the two things out. It's kind of a two step process. So I'm going to save and close it. And then you can see in the detail here that the payment has already been applied out. So it kind of did it automatically. So I can go back into the invoice now and it has applied out. You can see the link up top, uh, one payment made of a thousand dollars. And if I go down into the detail now, it's applied out. So if I wanted to present the invoice to someone, I can record the invoice and then go back into it so that I can then present them with the amount that's still due the the 4,400. So we'll talk more about that in the future. The other way you can do that is you could say, okay, instead of me recording the negative receivable that shows up, I'm going to assume maybe they not, might not follow through with it. And I'm going to say the plus button up top and I'm just going to record the original item 
with a delayed credit, which won't actually record the credit as, as it did when I made the receive payment, but it will record it later if they follow through, which I think again would only really be appropriate if there's a likelihood that they're not gonna actual follow through with it. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is gonna be for DDD, I'll say, and then we'll say save it. And let's let's make the prot, let's say that we're gonna have then down below that it's gonna be, I'll just make a new service item here. So I'm just gonna say, or say discount or something like that. I'll say tab, I'm gonna make it a service item. I'm just gonna call it a, a discount and boom. And then I'll say it's for, you know, $1,000. And the account it's gonna hit is gonna be the services. So I'll keep that. I'm gonna say it's non-taxable. Let's say it's a non-taxable. And then, okay. And then I'll save and close it. So now we've got that and $1,000, boom. So let's go ahead and save that. So I've, I've saved that and told told them that we can apply that out possibly to the future. Let's go down to DDD, where we now see this uh, $1,000 item here. However, when I go to the when I go to the balance sheet and I run the balance sheet and go into the accounts receivable, it is not showing up down here in the AR, right? If I go to the accounts receivable subledger, run the subledger, I don't see that negative balance as I saw uh, with, with this item here, right? I don't see anything for uh, DDD. So it didn't actually record it is the point. So it's only gonna be recorded if they actually follow through with the transaction. So then I'm gonna go back on over. So it's it's down here and it says it's it's a credit. So it still shows down here, but you got that's where the difference is that you gotta kind of be careful of. Is it recording it when I put it in place or not? And so now I can I can apply it out and I can create an invoice with it if I chose to create an invoice with it at this point in time. And again, usually you gotta be careful with it because when you apply it out, you gotta kind of apply the whole thing out oftentimes. So so I need to purchase something that's larger than that amount, like uh, pumps, and then we'll do 15 or a thousand of them again. And there we have it. So now now it's applying out. It should be applying the tax only to not to the discount component here when it when it does the tax. So it's a little bit different on the tax calculation. I'm going to pull this up to the top. And so now it's included uh, in this calculation, taking the 15 back down to 14 and then applying the tax uh, out to it at the 1200. So if I save and close that, now it's basically been recorded, you know, with the with the invoice and has been included at that point in time uh, with with basically the invoice. So it's a little bit tricky. I uh, on, in terms of when you would use that delayed credit, I don't think it's something that people are going to use all the time. And I think people sometimes misuse it when they should be recording like unearned revenue uh, or like a negative a negative uh, receive payment could also work and then do adjusting entries or a credit memo that results in a credit when you actually record uh, the, the credit. And again, I think it kind of depends on whether or not you expect them to follow through and actually uh, take advantage of that credit or if the likelihood is they won't do that for whatever reason. So do you have to put it on your books at the point in time you issue the credit or, or not? So that's, that's my idea on it.